string class. So from the day one itself we used to see the string class and that is of course in the argument of main method. So today we will see what exactly string class is doing and what is uh, how we can do lots of experiment over the string class. So mm -hmm. uh, a string class is one of the final class and if you remember what do you mean by final class can you tell me? Final class which cannot be uh, instantiated or uh, which cannot be which cannot be extended. Exactly. So final class, it is one of the final class, the meaning is very clear, you can't extend a string class and it is also available inside java.lang package, so you don't require to import any extra package for this. So this is the two things you have to remember. Remaining another point you have to remember is, <coughs> a string class is overriding the three method of object class, that is two string equals and has code. So we have seen last class very clearly what to string, what equals method and has code method is doing. So make sure mm -hmm. that whenever you are calling by the object of a string class, any of these three method, then instead of calling from the object class, it will call from two string because I told you it's overriding this three method. Third mm -hmm. point you have to remember is a string is the only class, their object you can create by two way with using new keyword and without using new keyword also. So a string can create the object by two way. So just have a look, then we will show you how we can create the object without using new keyword. Mm -hmm. So can you see here? Uh, okay, fine. Let's try a bit different. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a string s1 equal to new string and here I am going to pass the value called abc this is the one way just like a normal way traditional way to create an object in java that is new keyword and there is one more way that is a string s2 equal to if you are writing abc this is also one of the object don't think like that, S2 is not a object. It is also oh. one of the object of a string class. Now, what is the mm -hmm. difference between this new keyword and without using new keyword? That is interesting. Just try to understand it. Fine. So inside the memory, actually whenever you are running any Java program, then basically there is two types of memory. One is heap memory and another one is the stack memory. So heap memory is only coming for a storage purpose and the stack memory is coming for execution purpose. So inside the heap memory, we have one section with the name of pooling pool. We used to say pool. So this mm -hmm. pool is divided into two parts. One is constant pool and another one is non-constant pool. So let me tell you once again, inside the heap memory we have a section with the name of pool and this pool is of two types. constant pool and second is non-constant pool. ठीक है? Yeah. So, anyways you are creating an object with using new keyword. That's what we have created the S1 then your object is going to create it under the non-constant section. So your S1 is going to create the location under the constant code. I mean non-constant code. And whenever you are creating an object by using without new keyword, that is your S2, which is going to create a location under the constant pool. 
so this is the major difference you have to remember what is the meaning of constant with using new keyword and without using new keyword now let's see to what i'm going to do i'm going to create one more object a string s3 equal to new a string and again i'm passing here abc so value is same but doesn't matter if it is a no new keyword then definitely it will create under the non constant pool and uh, let's create one more like this one. now we have created the s3 which is also having the abc but we are using the new keyword so once again doesn't matter both s1 and s3 is having the same value but again s3 will also create a new location and inside the non constant pool now s4 this is the extra things that you need to know s4 is also having the value abc and inside the constant pool we have s2 which is already having the value abc so if it is a case of constant pool then s4 will not create a separate location it will be going to share the same location so the difference is very clear okay. in non constant pool every time object is going to allocate a separate location there is no common memory section here even though s3 and s1 is having same value but we are using the new keyword it will allocate a new location but in the case of constant pool if two objects are having the same value then instead of creating a separate location it will access the common location and that's what s2 and s4 is doing understood this concept yeah so now you can easily tell me last class i told you there is one operator with the name of equal to operator which is always checking the memory location so can you tell me s1 and s2 what will be the output false false exactly it will give you false because s1 and s2 both are in the different memory location one is in the constant pool and another one is in the non constant pool non constant what about the S1 equal to equal to S3. True or false? This is also false. Exactly, because both are having a separate location. Now, location, yes. what about S2 equal to equal to S4? This is true. this is true because both are sharing the same location so this is the small things and but very powerful things you need to know about the string class so s2 is also an object and s1 is also an object but the difference is this is in the constant pool and this is in the non constant sorry this is in the non constant pool and this is in the yeah. constant pool ठीक है so this is the concept yeah. of the string you need to bother about that let's proceed further it's very easy topic i think it much more than this you have to only know the methods of this and one more point that you need to take care that i will be covering you so only apart from this concept it's all about the string methods their library methods that is doing our job always mm -hmm. come to the next program yeah so here also we have the same stuff A B C A B C S one S two S three S four. Can you tell me the output here? Only things you have to remember. We are calling the equals method. And since I told you a string class is overriding the equals method, so it will check the value of the object, not the location of the object. Now tell me the output. Yeah. Um. Then. Okay. First one. First. Okay, you are asking about all five or yes, last? Yes, yes, all five. Okay, the so first one is false. False. No, first one is first one is true. First one is true. Yeah. Uh, second is false. Mm. Third is false. Mm. Then uh, S one, S two, S three. 
then true mm -hmm. then also true yeah last two are true yeah you are right so true false false true true so this is the concept of that that you are aware you need to bother a lot one more thing you have to know let's say if i'm going to write capital abc here so currently if you check the s1 and s2 it will give you false because the value is changed that's the reason it is giving you false yeah. but at the same time we have one more method with the name of equals ignore case by the name it is clear what it is going to do yes. it is going to ignore the ignore case once you ignore the case it will give you the again true theek hai so according to your requirement you yeah. can go equals or equals ignore case so both methods yeah. are coming very frequently whenever you need to check a string class value you can't check the string class value like this way it will always check the memory location make sure that in the case of integer if you are writing like i equal to equal to 90 this is okay you can compare any primitive value with the help of this primitive i mean double equal to operator but if it is a case of object then you must have to use the equals method for comparison theek hai whether the best upon value because once equals method is overrided it is checking the value of the object rather than checking the memory location come to the next point now we have a, a string operation certain operation we have among them the operations are nothing but first is concatenation <clears throat> second is comparison concatenation comparison and third is sub string so these are the three operation we need to see under the string first we'll see the okay. concatenation now what concatenation is saying to you let's develop one object here a string s1 and we have written always abc if you are interested you can write like this way also this is acceptable you can concat and you can print the s1 like this way theek hai so what will be the output of a string s1 here abc xyz abc xyz this is called concatenation if you are interested you can do the same stuff like this way also a string s2 equal to abc plus s1 this is also acceptable what will be the output of s2 here abc abc xyz abc abc xyz not only that we have one method also that is a concat concat <coughs> Which going to use s1 dot concat s2? Can you tell me the output of s3 here? It is just like s1 plus s2. Make sure that. Yeah. ABC XYZ ABC then ABC XYZ. Yes. ठीक है. So this is the normal concatenation. You need to know. Now some more mm -hmm. interesting concatenation you have to bother is. you can do like this way also 2 plus 4 plus abc can you guess the output here what will be the output of s4 2 4 abc okay i mean yes 2 4 abc it will give you 6 abc it is always start adding from the left side and it is going to do the mathematical operation which is a continuous integer number once a string came in the middle or anywhere in the uh, you know expression then the mathematical operation is not going to be done so here you are start adding from this side so 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 plus abc is 6 abc 
So that's the region which is giving oh. the six A B C. Now, if you are looking for two four A B C, then you have to write like this way: S five equal to two plus four plus A B C. Now it will give you the two four A B C. Right. Understood or not? <clears throat> yeah. Come to the S six. Here, if I write like this, way two plus four plus A B C plus two. Can you guess the output of S six? Yeah, this will be six A B C two. It will give you six A B C two exactly. Now what will be? Six A B C two six. Right. Don't I told you? Once a string came in the That's middle, left. it will yeah. start. Uh, it will not uh, start do the mathematical operation. That's the reason for making of six. Now, so you are clear with the concatenation. That's all. Nothing is yes. much more than this. One more thing you can. I can ask you, what will be if I write two plus four directly? What will the output of S seven? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, it's giving a parameter, right? So it's not possible. <laughs> Don't think that add the numbers directly into the string. At least you should must give the empty string also. If a string oh. can do these all operations, <clears throat> then we don't require the another data types. So here you can add any numbers to a string, but make sure that at least there should must be one empty string also. That's the reason you can see in any number I have already given at least one string in the anywhere in that expression. Clear, Mister? Yes, but um, I don't understand. I mean, why do we? I mean, what scenario will have to do this thing? Because if you have to add, we'll add an integer and maybe just concatenate it. Or uh, you are talking about the line number fifteen, whatever I have did. Where yes. you have to do like this? Then you yeah. forgot the object class once again to string method. There itself I have used this concept. See the to string method how I have overrided and how I was doing. Since you have to return the integer value, but you return that yeah. means string. What you will do? String. You can't add something extra that will make a user confusion. But you have to return into the string format. That's the reason I have concat or not. And you were told me he, he was always used to see this type of code on Google, but he was not able to understand it. Mm -hmm. I need to return a I value without doing any extra manipulation <coughs> of things over that. But the problem is that oh. our method is returning a string. I can't directly return I. I have to concat it with the string format. Then after I can return it. That's what I did like this, no? Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So this yeah. is the scenario where you need to do like this way, and that's what I'm doing here also. I'm using the empty string. You can't add any extra things because it will give you user confusion. If I use the i value, then how can you give me some extra data than i? Clear? Right. Yeah. So, so this is the string concatenation process where you can add the any data into a string. Next is a string comparison. So comparison is always happening based upon the ASCII value. So we have a ASCII value, you know. For every symbol of the keyboard, we have one unique integer number, and that is called yeah. ASCII value. Yes or no? Yes. So your comparison of a string is happening based upon ASCII value. So what exactly we are going to do? We have a compare to method. So I'm checking. S1 compared to S2. So before that, let me know if you are comparing two. Let's say there are two guys, and you are comparing the age of these two guys. Then how many scenarios are there? How many possibilities are there? 
for comparing the age of two guys, then how many possibilities are there? One. Only one? I mean, we are saying, we are comparing the age. Yes. Either both will be equal, right? Equal. Either yeah. the first one will be greater or lesser. So there is a two clip three scenario. Yes or no? Three possibilities are there. Okay, okay. Similarly, here also, whenever you are comparing the two strings, there is a two pos three possibility. Either the both strings will be equal. Mm -hmm. Either first one will be greater or a lesser. So this compare to method is working accordingly. What it is going to do, it is taking the ASCII value of this one, A plus B plus C, and it is taking the ASCII value of X plus Y plus Z, so obviously the S2 is having more ASCII value, and uh, let's first change the scenario, give here also A, B, C. Now we are taking the ASCII value of first one also and second one also. So in this case, ASCII value of S1 and ASCII value of S2 will be equal because both are having the same content, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So compare two method is taking the difference of their ASCII value and then after it is returning. And if difference is zero, then we can easily understand the both string are equal. Understood. Equal. So yeah. based upon the compare yeah. to return type, we are understanding whether it is a equal or greater or lesser. Okay. Yeah. Let's assume I am giving the x, y, z here. So obviously x x ASCII value will be greater than ABC. So first itself, it will take the minus of x ASCII value, minus of A ASCII value, and it will give you the output in positive, then you can understand the first string is a greater than second string. Okay? Oh, okay. If you change the scenario, if first one is having the lesson and second one is having, you will get the same 23, but you will get a minus symbol. So the meaning is very clear that first is lesser than the second one. And like this way, we can come to know whether the first string is greater or lesser or equal. So compare two method is returning always an integer number, positive, negative or zero. Zero in the sense both are equal, greater in the sense first both one is equal. greater and less, minus in the sense second is lesser. Clear? Yes. Now, whenever you are writing anything in a string internally, it is storing their value into the, it's the same context. It's also the same. Yeah. Whenever you are writing something into a string, that is going to be stored in the memory in the format of array. How it's going mm -hmm. to be stored? Try to understand. So let's say you are given S1 then S1 will store in the memory like this way. Hmm. So it is generating one allocation like this way. You know very well a string is nothing but it is a collection of array or I'm sorry character. It is a collection of characters or array of character. So it is okay. going to take a index like this way. The allocation is happening like this way in the memory. So we have a W E L C O M E Welcome So it is having here 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 So in the memory, your string S1 is going to store like this way. Now, what I am interested is, I want the only third index to 
third index to last. I don't want the complete string. I just want the portion of this string and there your mm -hmm. substring method is coming in picture. So I'm passing the substring third index. So what it will do from third index to it will consider the last one. So here is a third. So it will take the C and then after it will generate a C O M E. So in the S2 you are going to get the value from third index to last. So what will be the output of this? Come. Come. Exactly. And let's say you are interested in the middle of this string. Let's say I am looking for L C O. I don't want the front, I don't want the back, I want this one one day. So in this case, you have to pass the two parameter to the string, substring method. Mm -hmm. So meaning is very clear, substring method is overloaded into the string class. One is having the only one integer argument and second is having the two integer argument. Two in this parts. case, you have to pass the two parameter. You have to remember first one is included and the second argument is excluded. In the sense, 5 you are passing, then 5 will be not considered. It will take just before the 5. So, LCO in the sense, 2, 2, 5 in the sense, 2, 3, 4. That's all. Don't consider the 5. So, 5 is excluded. Mm -hmm. So, it will give you the LCO into the S4. So, if I run this program, you will get take come and LCO. And that is the magic of substring. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, service string is coming in picture like this. We know what, uh, uh, where exactly it will come much more. Always you have to do, you have a, some set of a string and you have to separate that by a comma. So, whatever logic okay. you will implement, that will generate a comma like this way. If you have a string like this, a string uh, S2, S5 equal to a, B, C, X, Y, Z, comma, A, 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 comma, B, B, B. If you implement any logic to do like this way, if you want to generate any string after following the comma, then your logic will generate one extra comma like this way also. But I never want a comma in last. So where there your substring will play a very vital role. So see how I'm going to do this. A string S6 is equal to S5 dot substring beginning I am giving the 0 comma mm -hmm. I need to consider the last index right so inside mm -hmm. the string we have a length method so if you write S5 dot length minus 1 minus 2 basically I have to give because length is always giving from 0 Oh, yeah. okay. S6. Let's run this. Oh, not two. Okay, okay. Last, Last is excluded. Mm -hmm. I forgot that. Yeah. So, minus one is highly sufficient. Can you see here? Your last comma is removed. So, like this way, whenever you want to implement the logic, you mm -hmm. are taking the substring help. Okay. 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 Yeah. So my target is to remove this last string because I am saying you whenever you will implement like this way separating the certain value by comma then whatever mm -hmm. logic you will implement it will generate the last comma also. So in that case in the last yeah. final result you have to call this substring method and that will remove your last comma value. Fine. So this is the third operation that is called con I mean substring or extraction of a string also. Fine. Yeah. Let's proceed further. Now inside the string class, we have a lots of methods and among them, we'll see some of the methods which is really important. Let's consider once again this welcome. Now what I am looking is, I just want to know the particular character on a particular index. So inside this string class, we have a method with the name of char at method. So char at method is going to tell you, give me the index and I will give you the character on that index. So I'm passing the three. Can you see the three is having the C here? Yes or no? So what will be the output of this? Yeah. Char at C1. Yes or no? 
so with the help of parrot mm. method you can take the particular character of that particular index similarly mm. we have a just opposite of this method index of method also so index of method is asking you give me the character and i will give you the value on that so we have a m here right so i just want to know the what is the index of m so if you run this program it will give you the five so meaning is this one it is generating the five index so m is stored on the fifth index or not hello yeah. so index yes, of is giving you the index of particular character let's say you have a more than one m then what will be if it is having the more than one m into this string then it will always consider the first one but if you are interested in the last one there also we have one method so we have one more method with the name of last index of ठीक है so if you give last index of then it will yeah. always consider the index of last m So these are the three methods. Similarly, I told you we have a method. Lots of methods are there. If you want to experiment, you can do like this. We have a tool. You can see code at point. मतलब it will give you the ASCII value of particular character. Code before point, just before that. Code point count from uh, how many? Uh, you know, lots of things are there. You can go accordingly. If you have any doubt, you can ask me. you can check whether it ends with certain things equals and also we have seen index we have seen last index is also there length method is there i told you length method is always counting the numbers of character into that if you run this program you will get is 7 because we have a seven characters over here yes or no so length is always less than the last i mean uh, length is always a one greater than the last index similarly you can go for lots of methods are here now what i want to show you is that let's say i'm going to give a point space 1 2 3 4 so do you know that it will generate a length method as a 7 plus 7 plus 1 4 it will give you 11 as a length can you see here so in a string case white space is also playing a role If you are giving the white space, this side also one, two, three, four, eleven plus four. Now it will becomes fifteen. Yes or no? Fifteen. So yeah. white space, this side also and this side also is there. But if you see here, it's not make any sense to have a white space before starting the string and after finishing the string. It is simply wasting your memory. Yes or no? So it's never advisable to use this types of string. in the memory or in the database also that's the reason java people has developed one method with the name of trim method what is the method name trim trim method now what i'm going to do i'm calling the length method before trim method also and after trim method also so once you call the trim method what trim method is going to do it is going to remove the white space from the beginning as well as the leading so leading and tailing white space it will remove and it will bring this string in the original format can you see once again it becomes 7 yeah. so this is the uh, trim method work and it's always good practice whenever you are doing you are trying to store a string somewhere then try to call the trim method it's always a good practice but make sure that trim method is not removing the white space from the middle if you Give the white space one, two, three, four. Still, it will give you the eleven. So meaning is very clear. In the middle, if you have a white a white space, that makes sense. So that's the reason trim method is never removing the white space from the middle. 
ठीक है ओके सो दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ नाउ निकित जस्ट वन और टू थिंग like whenever we say suppose uh, this s1 dot we see lot of method displayed right mm -hmm. sometimes i see it shows some percentage and sometimes like uh, you see seeing it now it didn't show any percentage what is that percentage mean i mean the usage of it or? i ne i never seen the percentage what percentage you are talking s1 dot where is the percentage no here it's not showing but for some of the method it shows like where so, it is showing string right the uh -huh. class It shows even percentage there. I don't know why. It Can you give me any library class where you are saying this? Mm, I mean, usually it shows for some general uh, stuff. No, just. Uh, I don't remember. I'll, I'll I'll check it and I'll let you. Know. Exactly, you must take me. See, if you're doing the S1, then it might be give you the some variables name also here. S1 dot in the mm -hmm. sense Eclipse will access those members of that class which can be accessible in this class. so might be sometime we have a variable also so we will get a variable also here so if we go to the oh. string class then we have a lots of variable also but almost of variables of that class is a private so you can't access that that's the reason it is giving you only public method which you can call here oh simply the never seen but if you have seen just let me know give you an example i will see that okay okay and one more thing like on top uh, you were using some marker right beside that there is a class and some play button what is that sorry um, where it exactly you are talking here on top where you have all this buttons just below window you have two buttons right you were using it what is those for clipboard or something hmm? this one right side right side which one i mean no i mean just beside that uh, after play After three, four buttons, if you go right side towards right, if you go, there is a from so where you are taking the marker. This one up, 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 this one up. On the button only. This right, one right, right, right. Yeah, third button from here. It's Next. something search and all. You bring your cursor, it will yeah. take you know. So there is a lots of search yeah, this, and toggle breakpoint. Yeah, this this what is this for? Toggle break. Toggle is for coming in the debugging time. This is toggle. If you double click here, see there one button came. This is called toggle button. We have one session for you debugging. How to debug a program? That time I will discuss for you. Okay. Oh, okay. This is search option yeah. that you can achieve by Control H also. If you press Control H, it will tell you where you want to search something. Oh, no, because it is always pressed in your. Uh, this I was thinking if you use this it. This is the default default button for all Eclipse. I don't know. You supposed to get this. So here it will tell you where you are searching certain things. It will ask you what types of file is there. So if you go for the real time exp uh, real time, then we have a lots of file dot java dot xml dot javascript dot css dot xml. So in that case, you have to if you are looking for certain keyword that is available in the xml file of your complete project, so you have to give abc like this, and here you have to write a star dot xml. So inside your workspace, how many xml files are there? It will search those ab inside all xml file. So this is one kind of search. another kind of search is control shift r there if you are looking for some manager class let's say so you have to type here it will show you the all manager class available inside the your eclipse work space so you can see this so this types of things is available this is a shortcut and that's what this search is doing if you click on this search also see the same window i got whatever i got by control h theek hai okay now i was actually asking about the next button like this is all this Which next up. button? The C, yeah, this, 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 and beside that, both the buttons are pressed, right? That is what I told you. It's a toggle, no? I told you I will tell you later. Toggle. Okay, okay, this later. Okay, okay, this. This is the toggle breakpoint. So it is playing. Yeah, that's what it does. 
that that is what it does so i thought maybe this is the way you use it i mean while see there is a lot of functionality eclipse people has given inside that even if you ask me frankly even i don't know the all this stuff so yes, yes. don't bother no, that's all that. right but it was always pressed so i thought maybe this is something we should use when we are working <laughs> no 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 it's not like that it's oh, not yeah. so mandatory fine theek hai now okay. we can come to the point so what i'm going to do here i'm calling the once again trim method so my expectation is i supposed to get the original length of this string that is 7 yes or no <laughs> before trim method yeah. i am calling the length method supposed to give the 7 plus 4 plus 4 that is 15 that's cool but after calling the trim method i supposed to get the original length of this string that is what uh, the 7 yes or no 7 let's yeah. run this program and see the magic you are not getting the 7 still you are getting the 15 even though you call it trim method but i am getting the length as a 15 why like that here you are going to see the one of the very very important features of the string and that feature says a string class object is a immutable object there is two kinds of object one is mm -hmm. mutable and second is immutable immutable theek <laughs> hai so what is the difference between mutable and immutable mutable object once it is created it can no it can be destroyed but immutable once mm -hmm. it is created it cannot be modified it cannot be destroyed also so instead of destroyed mm -hmm. just consider it cannot be modified so what that's the magic here and try to understand how a string is immutable what happen actually so whenever you are creating any string class object you can't modify that it is never mm -hmm. possible to modify that so if you are thinking we have a string and it's having the four white space here in the memory and trim method is going to remove the white space from here and here then you are completely wrong it's never happening like this way what trim no. method is doing after calling it is going to generate one more string without white space so initially one string is like this way with having white space and after calling trim method again one new string is going to be created like this way mm -hmm. because i told you it cannot be modified the existing once you have written this string of course it will be available in the memory till now your program is running so that's the reason still your s1 is pointing the previous one not the new one so your trim method is did their job they have created a new string for you and in the memory we have a new set of string this side but still your s1 is pointing the previous one and that is the reason you have to take to the string now you have to point like this way till now you will not do the s1 equal to s1 dot trim you will not get a original string length because mm -hmm. meaning is very clear still the previous string is still existing in your memory so if someone is asking you how can you say string class object is immutable just give it this small piece of examples and tell them if it is only one doesn't matter whether we are writing s1 equal to or not it should give our original length only is after right. not calling s1 equal to trim and you are getting the previous length the meaning is very clear i still the old one will be existing in the memory understood this point yeah so that is the reason it's never advisable to store your password into a string why because if you store your password <laughs> into a string the person who is having the very good knowledge of operating system and memory they can misuse your password after reading the dump memory section so as password is never going to store into the string format and it's never advisable to store those data which is very sensitive into the string oh yes. so how do you do that there is some other thing or We have the character array. So for password purpose, we are using the character array. That is also a string. Oh. It is also an array of. Right, right. So you can use the character. So this okay, okay. 
Immutable word, you understood what is the meaning of immutable? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is important one, you have to remember about this string class. Now, that's all about this string, nothing is much more than this. Uh, we have a certain couple of programs here. And one of the program is very, very important. Reversing of a string program. How to reverse a, a string. Let's see how easy it is. You have to think always how to reverse a string. Then in that case, let's say we have one string program. So, Let's develop a separate program here. Right click, mm -hmm. new class, reverse 2. Main method, string, s1, and give the same welcome. I want okay. to develop a program to reverse this string. So first of all, you have to compose your logic. Logic is important. Once your logic is done, you can easily develop a program for any kinds of, uh, you know, doesn't matter, reversing or whatever. So basically, we have to reverse this string, and in one word, I have to read the character from the back side. Yes or no? Yeah. If I'm talking about reversing this string, then I need to read the character from back side that is E M O C like this way. Yeah, what is happening to this? Okay, the system is little slow and it's taking time to come or something. No, this something is problem okay. with this. Go to meeting setup. This marker is get with the eclipse or it's like from the No, it is from go to meeting. Oh. Now, so I just want to reverse this thing. Look at how I am going to compose the logic. So, mm -hmm. idea is very simple. I need to start reading from back side, and for that purpose, I need one loop here. First, I have to read E and C. So, repetition is there. So I'm going to use one for loop here. That for loop will start from s1 dot length mm -hmm. because I have to start from the back one, back side, right? Yes. So what I'm going to give yeah. here s1 dot length. Mm -hmm. But you can see here last index is six and your length is seven. So if you give length directly, it will give you one exception once again. Index out of bound exception. So you have seen or not, in this case, char at I am giving 30, but I don't have 30 yeah. into this string. You will get one exception once again because I told you logically it is incorrect. So you will get one exception, a string array out of bound exception, a string index out of bound exception. Oh. So make sure that yeah. you are not allowed to give those index which is not available inside of the string. Similarly, mm -hmm. if I give length here, it will give me the char at 7 that is not available it will give you the string index out of bound exception so try to put minus 1 here theek hai mm -hmm. yeah. it should be condition what i am going to put is it should be greater than or equal to 0 yes or no because i have to read till last yeah. and instead of i plus plus i have to give a i minus minus okay. that's all my loop is done now i am going to keep create one empty string here where I will store my result we have seen the concat process as well as char at method also so char at method is saying to you give me the index I will return the character for you see the logic first time it will read the e and it will add with the s2 so S2 is empty, so the final result is going to be stored into the S2 is E only. Again, you are trying to do yeah. E plus char at next time it becomes minus minus that is 5, so E plus M. Next time the S2 is going to store the value is EM. And like this way, till now it will be reading 
where the zero is not coming. Now your final result is stored into S2. So if you run this program, you will get your output as a your reversing of the string into the S2. See how mm -hmm. easy it is to develop the program for reversing of string. Right. If you don't want to do this, that also you can code optimize. You can simply <coughs> put a SOP here. S1 dot char at i. But if you run this program, it will give you the reversing or a reversed string in the manner like this way. So instead of print Alan, use the print one. See, you don't require an extra S2 string also. Getting the point or not? Yeah. So this is the easiest way to develop this string program. Like this way, we have developed one more program here. I'm taking the user input. Can you see here with the help of a string? in a scanner class okay. I'm taking the user input mm -hmm. and then after I'm doing the same operation here once you're done with the string diversing then there is one more very popular program asked by the interviewer or interview point of view it's important and that is nothing but palindrome program what's that yep palindrome, palindrome. you know palindrome the word yep reverse is also same like a original yes or no so it's very easy. Yeah. Once you are done with the reversing of a string, you can easily develop the program for reversing, I mean, palindrome checking also. Only the things you have to check is the original string or reverse string is equal or not. Equal, yeah. And we have seen just now the equals method, which is checking the content of the both the object. Yes or no? Yeah. See here, that's what I'm doing here. S1 is your original string, whatever you are taking from user. And S2 is your reverse string where you are going to store your reverse data. Now I'm checking S1 dot equals S2. If condition is true, then meaning is very clear. The word is palindrome. Yes or no? Yeah. And if it is not, then definitely it is not a palindrome. Let's run this program now. I'm giving the word called madam, which is a palindrome. Mm -hmm. Can you see here? Reverse is also madam and you're getting the result as a palindrome. Let's run this and give this time something else. It is not palindrome. You can see here reverse is something and it's not palindrome. So idea is very simple. Once right. you are done with the reversing of a string, then palindrome program becomes very easy. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this is the reversing of a string program. I'm going to give you a homework today you need to work on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. and what is the homework I want that you have to create one registration class mm -hmm. you have to create one class with the name of registration or reg inside this class you have to ask the user there should be two method basically register and display method register method will ask the user enter the details like first name, last name, but you must ask the username and password. Remaining data, you can ask whatever you want, but you must ask during registration, enter your username, enter your password. Okay. Uh -huh. In display method, you have to simply display the method like your username is this one, your password is this one, your name is this one, like this way. That's all in the registration mm -hmm. class, only two methods will be there, register and display. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then after you have to create one login class. In this login class, first things you have to do is extend the login class with the registration class. Mm -hmm. right. And here yeah. we have a two method basically, login and validate. Under login, you have to ask enter your username and password. Now, this is so simple. Main idea you have to implement is validate. You have to check, user have to give the same username and password whatever he is giving during the registration during login also. Very simple here you have to take a two variable username one, username two, user, uh, password one, yeah. user username two, password two and under validate method you will know that 
equals method. You have to check username dot equals in if condition. No. If condition is true, then you have to call the display method. After writing this sentence, your login is success and your details are like this way. If login is failed, then you have to keep login is failed and again call the login method. So validate method is always going to check the user has given the same username password while you know what I mean while giving mm -hmm. the login credential and then after inside the login class itself give the main method call the register method first then after call the login method and then after call the validate method can you do this it's interesting yeah 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 <laughs> it is interesting yeah we'll do. Uh, so it, first try by yourself if you're not able to do then i have i think you can do there is no point i have already the registration class you can take for the reference after development of and i have a login class here developed already and validate whatever mm -hmm. i'm doing just try your logic first if you're not able to do this then follow this registration and login Okay. Sure. Yeah. So uh, one question. So you said uh, whenever user enters the wrong, I mean the wrong username password, it should ask again, or it should just come out that invalid username. Yes, exactly. That's what. Let's run this program and see how it's. Okay. So first output should come like this registration form. I am giving some first name, last name, age, username, and password. Password also I am giving A. So I am getting your registration is success and login form is open. I have to give the same username and same password. Then I will suppose to get like this. Your login is success and your details are like this way. It is oh, asking me, okay. do you want to continue again? I'm giving yes. Again, login page is a start. Let's say I'm giving some details like this way. Mm -hmm. Login is success. I mean, registration is success. This time I'm giving the password wrong. Let's see how I'm getting. Please enter the correct username and password. Oh, okay. 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 So that is what I want the response. Sure. Okay. You can do it very okay. easy. Mm -hmm. Chalo. So we have learned a lot of stuff about the string. The meaning of the methods, like ready method, play around that. We will get lots of confidence. Okay. But what is the drawback you have seen in this string? It's a immutable. Yes or no? Once it is created, it can right. be destroyed. To overcome on this problem, Java people has developed one more class with the name of a string buffer. What is the class name? A string buffer. A string buffer. Yes. <clears throat> so the only difference is it is also just like a string class. Almost all methods are common here also, but it is immutable. Once it is created, it can be destroyed also. And you cannot uh, create an object of a string buffer without using new keyword. Another point, it is overriding only two string method of object class, not equals, not has code. So we have a append method here. So create a string buffer <coughs> object like this way, pass the certain input, initial string, or if you want, you can skip this also. And with the append method, you can keep on appending value and it is going to reflect in the same place of a string, I mean in the memory. So if it is a case of a string, what will be first time welcome? Second time, welcome ABC, new string. Again, welcome ABC FF as a new string. But in the case of a string buffer, it will be not like that. Next time it will come here itself, welcome ABC on the same place, it will start modifying the object. That is the main concept behind a string buffer. Getting the point or not? Yep, yep, yep. So, this is the, whenever you don't want the immutable kinds of things, then go for a string buffer. If I run this program, it will get the output here. We don't require to give s1 equal to s1 dot append, s1 equal to s1 dot append because it is a immutable, it is reflecting the value at the same place. Getting the point? So this is the magic. If you want to reverse, sometime interviewer is asking, develop the program for reversing of a string. And they are not giving any condition, 
Then inside the string buffer, we have one method with the name of reverse method. You don't need to write any for loop. You don't require to write any logic. If you run this program, you will see here in one line itself, you are going to get the reverse string. But interviewer is also very clever. They will not tell you, they will give you condition. Don't use the reverse method. If they are saying don't use the reverse method, then definitely you have to use the previous logic. Mm -hmm. Clear? Yeah.